In today's video, we are going to talk about how to find or how to calculate the generic intervals between two notes. Now when we say generic intervals, what we're talking about is the size of the interval. And so calculating the size of the interval, really you don't take any accidentals into account. At first we're going to start with no accidentals, but you're really just counting from the bottom note up the musical alphabet to the upper note. So let's take a look at this first example. Here we have in treble clef C to G. And so we can count the notes of the musical alphabet starting on C. C is 1. So C, D, E, F, G. We could write them down here. C, D, E, F, G. And so when we count these, each one would get a count. So C is 1, D is 2, E is 3, F is 4, G is 5. So to go from C to G, this interval size is some sort of fifth. Now one thing that's a little bit unusual um, when we count generic intervals, let me give another example up here, make sure. C to C equals 1. So if we go from some sort of C to some sort of C, that's always going to be counted as an interval of a first. So that takes a little bit getting used to, and this is different than when we do the second half uh, or we find the half steps in the quality. But when we're counting generic intervals, we start with 1. So in this case, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now you could also count lines and spaces. So line is 1, space is 2, line is 3, space is 4, and line is 5. Either way, from C to G is going to be some sort of fifth. Let's go to the next example. Here we have F and we have A. So we can count up the musical alphabet. F is 1. G is 2, A is 3. So from F to A, it's some sort of third. Or we can count space, line, space. One, two, three. Let's go to the next examples. I know it's not quite as fancy when I do these videos on paper, but my gosh, it's easier to make. <laughs> anyway, so here we are, treble clef again. So we have a G, this is, this is a big one, G up to an E. So we'll give it some room. So G is 1, A is 2, B is 3, C is 4, D is 5, E is 6. So G, A, B, C, D, E, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So G to E is some sort of sixth. Moving on, I better keep that treble clef there. Okay, here we have an E to a D. So we have an E all the way up to a D. We'll put it way over there. So we have E is 1. F is 2, G is 3, A is 4, B is 5, C is 6, and D is 7. So E, F, G, A, B, C, D. We're just counting the notes of the musical alphabet that separate these two notes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. E to D is some sort of seventh. Do some examples in the bass clef. So here we have D to F. Pretty straightforward one. D is 1, E is 2, F is 3. So D to F, some sort of third. 
C to B. This is kind of a big one. So C is 1, D is 2, E is 3, F is 4, G is 5, A is 6, and B is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. C to B is some sort of seventh. Now I say some sort of because when we're calculating the generic intervals, we're only concerned with the pure distance between those notes. Since we're counting the musical alphabet, this doesn't take accidentals into account quite yet. Let's do two more examples without key signature. Then we'll do a couple more examples with the key signature. So here we have B to G. So B to G. So B is 1. C is 2, D is 3, E is 4, F is 5, G is 6, and my capital G looks a lot like a 6. So B to G, some sort of sixth. Next one, E up to A. So E is 1, F is 2, G is 3, and A is 4. E to A is some sort of fourth. Now, when we have a key signature, in the past examples you'll notice we don't have any key signatures. We're just all in the key of C. When we have a key signature, it doesn't really affect how we count the generic interval. Um, it will affect how we count the half steps, which gives us the interval quality. But for this, so we're counting from an E flat to an A flat. So even though because of these key, this key signature, this is an E flat and this is an A flat, we're still only interested in the notes of the musical alphabet. So E flat is 1, F is 2, G is 3, and A flat is 4. So this is some sort of fourth. Now it's a good practice. I know that it doesn't matter because even if this was just an E to an A, it would still be a fourth. But it's a good practice to write exactly what the notes are based on the key signature so you don't forget to take that into account when you actually have to go and count the half steps. So, although these flats don't matter in this step, they will matter very, very soon. Let's take a look at the next one. So the E flat key signature applies over here. So this is an A flat to a G. This is kind of a big one. So A flat is 1, B flat is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E flat is 5, and F is 6, and G is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So A flat to G is some sort of 7th. Now we're in the key signature of A major. We know that because the last sharp is half a step under the tonic. So G sharp, you go up a half step, that'd be A. So here we have F sharp to A. F sharp is 1. G sharp, because of the key signature, is 2. And A is 3. So F sharp to A is some sort of third. I don't need to move that. Here we have C sharp to F sharp. So C sharp is 1, D is 2, E is 3, F sharp is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. C sharp to F sharp is some sort of fourth. Four more examples and we'll be done with this video in generic intervals. Switch to bass clef. We have the key signature for B flat major. So here we have A to E flat. So A is 1, B flat is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E flat is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So A flat or A to E flat, some sort of fifth.
Doodly doo. Here's B flat up to A. So B flat is one, C is two, D is three, E flat is four, F is five, G is six, and A is seven. So B flat up to A is seven. We're always counting from the bottom note up to the top note. Um, we could do it from the top to the bottom and we should be able to get the same answer, but in this sort of thing, really picking one way and doing it that way is going to give you the best results. So let's always count from the bottom note, or the lower note, to the higher note. Two more. Bass clef, key signature of D major. So here we're going from a D to a G. That's a pretty straightforward one by now. So D is 1, E is 2, F sharp from the key signature is 3, and G is 4. So from D to G, 1, 2, 3, 4, some sort of fourth. Last one. Sometimes when notes are only one step apart or a second apart, even though they sound at the same time, they'll be written slightly separated because otherwise they'd be really crunched together, and that's no good. So here we have a D to an E, and this one's pretty straightforward. D is 1, E is 2. So from a D to an E is some sort of second. And that is how we do generic interval counting.